Hello, all my good friends at Perry Highway Lutheran Church Pre-K, students, teachers, parents, grandparents, friends. It's Pastor Newman back here again. But does it look like I'm getting shorter to you? Well, I'm really not getting shorter physically, but I'm getting shorter of my time with you. I only be with you for a few more weeks and then a new interim pastor will be coming. But it's been hard not being able to see you in person and doing things in, with the chapel. Uh, of course, we've been chapel online, but it's always fun to see your smiling faces and hear your laughing and all those things. But hopefully having a good summer now. Uh, school is over. This is summer vacation. Uh, and I hope you're enjoying the sunshine. It's supposed to get really warm this week. And uh, it's been really nice over the weekend. But I'm happy to be back with you again, and I'm ready to uh, sing a few songs with you. Start off with a few songs, and I have some surprises for you today, okay? First song is going to be, I have that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. So you get ready to sing with me, okay? Here we go. All right, get that joy, 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 joy ready to go. Are you ready? Here we go. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I have the love of Jesus. That's the first song I have for you. And now this song, I sang it before one more time with you, one time before. It's called All God's Critters Have a Place in the Choir. And it's going to be what I'm going to be talking about today with you. All God's Critters, all God's amazing creatures. So you may not know the words to this, but you can listen. Maybe you can follow along and think about all these critters, all these animals that I'm going to be singing about, animals and birds and different things. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing higher. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. Listen to the bats, it's the fish on the bottom where the bullfrog croaks and the hippopotamus comes and comes with a big to do. And the old cow just goes, ooh. Dogs and the cats, they kick up the middle, and the hummingbird hums, and the cricket fiddles, the donkey brays, and the pony neighs, the old coyote owls. Listen in the trees where the little birds sing, on the melody with the high new ring, and the owl hollers over everything, the gay bird disagrees. In the night time, singing in the day, the little duck quacks and he's on his way. The opossum ain't got much to say, the porcupine talks to himself. It's a simple song, a living song everywhere, about the ox and the fox and the fuzzy grizzly bear, the monkey alligator and the octobow, the sly raccoon and the turtle dove. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing higher. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or pause or anything they got now. And that ends real fast, doesn't it? All right, okay. Now I have two of God's creatures I want to show to you. I showed them to you before, but they're sleeping close by to me now. Going out here, and I'm going to show you Charlie, our cat. Charlie's awake now. Look, he heard me coming. Charlie, say hello to the kids, everybody at preschool. See that? That's Charlie. See him? There he is. Charlie's a very good cat. He's going to be a greeter, I think, someday in a pet store because he likes people. 
the cats we had before would all run and hide. But Charlie, when he hears somebody coming to the house, he runs and sees who it is. He thinks they are here to see him. So Charlie is our official greeter. And Roberta, oh, let me show you where Roberta is. You may not be able to see her. She's a black cat, but she is in my guitar case. Do you see her? There she is. That's Roberta. They're always close to me when I'm doing things. They like to be a part of all the different activities that's going on. They are really good friends. Hopefully you have pets too. Uh, treat them very special. They're part of your family. All right, jokes of the day. These are gonna be jokes about a specific one of God's creatures. So uh, think about the jokes and it's what I'm going to be talking about. They're what I'm going to be talking about today. What do you get when you cross a B, cross a B with a doorbell? What do you get when you cross a B with a doorbell? A humdinger, a humdinger. A joke may not be a humdinger, I don't know, but what kind of bee always is dropping things? What kind of bee is very clumsy, always dropping things? Think about that, always dropping things. A fumble bee, instead of a bumblebee, a fumble bee. You're not supposed to fumble in football, so you wouldn't want a bee playing football for you. And how do bees get to class? How do bees get to school, okay? I told you this a long time ago. See if you remember. How do bees get to school? How do they get to class? On a school buzz. B-U-Z-Z -Z instead of B-U-S. All right. Enough of jokes, Pastor Newman, right? Okay. Anyway, I'm going to read a story from the Bible today. From the very first book of the Bible, from Genesis. That means the beginning of things. And it's about God creating the world. And one part here says, and, and God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, animals and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. All that God made, God saw that it was good. Yes. There are so many creatures in the world today, and so many important creatures, and sometimes they're so small we may miss them, or sometimes we may think, oh, I can, I'd be afraid of them. Well, we can, should be afraid of certain kinds, yeah. But one kind of creature is very important to us. I know because my daughter, she's an architect, she helps build buildings, she's an artist, and she's a beekeeper. Yeah, she keeps bees. For many years, she's kept bees. I help her a little bit with things, but I like to take pictures of bees. There's a picture that I took of one of her honeybees, one of the girls in our backyard. I say girls because all the girls, she may explain that to you because she's going to be a special guest a little later, okay? And she actually drew this picture here. She's a very good artist to see the different bees. She took a long time to draw that. She's very talented that way, not just because she's my daughter, but she's very good that way. But bees are very, very, very important to our world. If you like fruit and you like vegetables, which hopefully you're good, they're very good for you. They're very good for you. You can thank a bee for about every one out of two bites that you take. Yeah, bees pollinate the flowers that become the fruit, that become apples, that become pears, that become things in your garden, beans and everything. You can thank a bee. And the amazing thing what bees do is they produce this amazing stuff. Aha, honey, honey, oh yes. I love the honey. Our bees make very, very good honey. In fact, she's won three national awards for how good her honey is. Yeah, she's, she takes very, very good care of her bees. She's very, very good with them. And you know to make this is four ounces of honey. <clears throat> this is only four ounces. It's not even a pound. It's four ounces of honey. Do you know how many flowers bees have to visit to make one-fourth of a pound? Not a whole pound, but one-fourth of a pound of honey. Almost a half a million, 500,000 flowers just to make this little bit of honey. Yes. And the bees have to fly. Get this. 12,500 miles 
back and forth from the hive to the flowers, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's halfway around the world is to make four ounces of honey. And this is the life's work, the life's work of over 200 bees. They work their whole lives to make this. She's very good. She doesn't take all the honey notes. She's a lot for them there, but in the wintertime, she feeds them and helps them get through all the different difficult things that they have to do to get through the winter with the cold and everything. They can't fly all year long. They have to stay inside their hive. They keep warm by eating the honey and they can't wait in the spring to get out and start flying around and doing all different things. So honey is a very, very important food item. When you're under one years old, you should not eat honey. You know, it's not good for, for babies, for young children, but it has a lot of antioxidants and vitamins and minerals and things that if you had to live on one food, they say honey would keep you alive. It's really sweet, but it's not the same as sugar. It acts the same way, but it metabolizes. It goes into your body a little slower. So it's very, very, very good. And it tastes so good. And every honey is different depending on what type of flowers the bees are visiting. Yes, yeah, it's a completely different taste to them. So, so anyways, I'm going to pause for a little bit, okay? And when you see me again, I'll be in a different place with my daughter, Christina. So you just hold on a little bit. You hold on, you hold on and wait until I'm back with a surprise. Surprise, it's Pastor Newman back again. I'm outside our house, as you can see behind me there. We live in Shaler Township actually in the house that my grandfather built in 1916. And one of the things I saw when coming out the door, it's pretty amazing. Let me show you right here on the ground. I have to switch the camera around here. Maybe I can't, I don't, can't. Look at this here. It is a four leaf clover. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that four leaf clover. Our daughter, Christina is over here. My wife, Linda, and I have a daughter, Christina, and a son, Jonathan, and his wife's name is Larissa. And we have two grandchildren, Ellie and Zana. They live in Pittsburgh now. They did live in California, so they're real close to us now. Anyways, I'm going to put my hood on here because we're going over to look at the bees. Christina is getting ready to look Get your bees out and you're gonna look inside a beehive. We'll see that in a minute. Okay, here's our daughter Christina over here. She's bees are very busy, they're flying around. She's not as afraid of the bees. She's not, she works with them all the time. The girls love her. She I'm get real close up here no. inside a beehive. You see all of them there working? We're see? looking for the queen. Yeah. There's one queen bee. One queen and bee. And 50,000 worker bees. 50,000 bees in one hive. Just trying to find the queen. But sometimes it takes a while. Wow, look at that. Can you see that, everybody? Look at that. That's pretty amazing. They're filling it with honey. I'll get a real close up look here for you. There's all the, a lot of nectar in there. They're busy. It's not honey until they dehydrate it. They are very, very busy as little bees. They're doing a great job. This is smoke. Why do you have smoke going, Christine? To keep the bees calm. Keeps the bees calm while she's working with them. So they don't she, get hurt. She's helping them. I don't use a lot of smoke. Not a lot of smoke. Wow, look at this. They're coming around this frame here. It's called a frame. It looks like they are leaving room open for a queen to lay eggs. How many? They put the babies in here. How many eggs does a queen lay in a day, Christine? Uh, in peak season, about... 1,500 to 2,000. Wow, that's a lot of work. Queen doesn't have an easy life as a bee. She keeps very, very busy. Keeps the whole hive going. How long does a bee live normally? A worker bee lives about six weeks in the summer and mm -hmm. about about four to five months in the winter. That's and a queen amazing. bee can live up to five years, but a lot of times they live about two years. Look at all the bees here. They're they're already making their honey inside there. The queen was up in here. There are eggs up in here. The queen was up there. Can you That's see a good sign. This is the honey in top of it. There's more. <clears throat> so this here 
where it's capped is, is honey, and this is nectar that they're dehydrating by fanning their wings. And when, the, when it gets drier, then they cap it and it stays nice and preserved. That's, that's how they preserve their food, by dehydrating. I saw Christina, the queen bee, she has all these. No, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually a worker bee. She's a worker bee, but she keeps the other bees I'm not bees a queen going. bee. <laughs> how many hives do you have, Christina? We're managing about a hundred hives right now. That's a lot of hives. And how many bees are in a hive? Uh, about 50,000 for a full hive. 50,000 bees in one hive. And they all know to go back to, the, to their same hive when they leave in the morning. Yeah. They memorize their surroundings. How do they know where to go for the flowers? They're smart. They memorize their surroundings. <laughs> do the other bees come back and tell them where the yeah, flowers? Yeah, they, they, they have a language. It's a, da a dancing language and also using uh, scent on their body so they know the smell of the flower they're looking for. Very interesting. And so they navigate, how do they navigate back and forth? By the they sun? use the sun. By the sun. So, it's a really sunshiny day today. So they're able to tell the other bees which direction to go. That's box. And there's box upon box there. There's a lot of bees on top there. Do they want to count them? Oh, there's one bee here that looks like it's spelling. No, it's a spelling There's a bee. dancing bee. There's a dancing bee. See them dancing there? What are they doing when they're dancing like that? That one, I think, is like a cheerleader bee. I think it's kind of getting everybody stimulated. It's kind of like uh, basically giving them a pep talk. Wow, okay. Get out there and get that honey while it's nice and sunny. All right, well, thank you very much, Christina, for this very special treat inside a beehive. Thank you. I'll let you finish your work there. And I'm going to now say goodbye to everybody. It's time to say goodbye to everybody. I'm going to take my veil off. Doesn't bother Christina, all the bees, they know her. But anyways, thank you for dropping by today. We're going to have a little word of prayer before we close things. So let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for the wonders of nature, for the amazing world, for all the creatures you have created. Help us always to protect them. Thank you for the blessings you give to us and our families and our friends, mothers and fathers, grandparents, all those people who make our life so special. Thank you, Lord, for every blessing every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, now I've got a fly butterfly. Very appropriate for today. And also, don't worry. Be happy. God bless you all. Goodbye now.